In this video, I'm gonna show you how to clean the blower fan in your furnace. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Let's go change and get this done. Come on. The blower fan is what moves the air around in your home. It pushes the air out to the house and creates suction that pulls the air back to the furnace and it just cycles like that. It runs all year round during the heating season and the cooling season. Just like other components in your furnace, it gets dirty. As dirt and dust build up on the blades, it can decrease the volume of air it's able to move or it can actually cause it to become unbalanced. I wouldn't classify cleaning the blower fan as a beginner project. We're gonna be uh, disconnecting wires, working around the circuit board and pulling this big blower cage out and then having to put everything back together. Cleaning the blower fan is gonna be the easiest part. Getting to it can be difficult. If you aren't comfortable doing these types of things, just skip this project and have a technician do it next time you have your system serviced. But if you think you're up to the task, I'll show you what to expect when you're cleaning your blower fan. Well, what to expect when cleaning mine. It should be really similar. Let's go. Since we're gonna be working in the furnace, we're gonna start by shutting off the power and then removing the doors. Once you've located where the blower fan is, this blower assembly usually slides in and out on a track that's mounted underneath. It looks kind of like this. Now, before you disconnect anything, you want to stop and just look at everything. You're trying to figure out what needs to be disconnected, what needs to move out of the way in order for this blower assembly to slide out. You may have to disconnect a bunch of wires like I have to do here. Your circuit board may not be attached to the blower uh, assembly like mine is, but just take a second and look and see what needs to come apart in order for this to slide out. You might want to take a picture or draw some stuff up on paper. I had so many wires, I felt more comfortable doing both. Sometimes you can disconnect the circuit board and just swing it to the side. But with mine, it's easier to disconnect everything to get the blower housing out. As I disconnect everything, I'm very careful to make sure I know exactly where everything was connected so that I don't have any trouble putting everything back together. Now, before you can slide the fan out, you'll need to loosen a couple of screws that are holding it in place. So we're gonna loosen these two screws. Once we've done that, we should be able to slide the blower cage out. Be careful when you're sliding it out. It is heavy, so it'll drop, and make sure that you don't pinch any wires or get them snagged. Now that I have my blower housing out, I can access the screws that were holding the circuit board bracket in place. I'm going to remove this so that it makes cleaning a little easier. Now, in order to clean this, you can use a variety of tools. I've got some wire brushes, a toothbrush, I've got an air compressor and a vacuum here. What we're trying to do is get all of the buildup off of the fins that have collected over time. First, I'm going to hit it with the air compressor and remove as much of the loose dirt as I can. Now, when you're cleaning the fins, you wanna be careful of these little clips that you'll see on the blades. Those are for balancing. The manufacturer puts those on, and so you don't wanna move those around or take those off. You can move on to using the wire brush, toothbrush, or whatever you can find to get the rest of the dust and dirt off the blades. may seem a little tedious, but be patient and try and clean each blade as best you can. While I've got everything taken apart, I'm going to go ahead and clean this bracket that holds the circuit board. Just be careful and don't scrub on the circuit board itself. I'm also gonna use the wire brushes and just clean in general wherever I can reach. Cleaning the, the fan, I was able to get most of the dirt off with the air compressor. I was surprised at how 
it looked like it was caked on, but with some compressed air, it blew a lot of it off. Uh, I had some wire brushes and things that I used. Honestly, this little brass brush that was thin worked, but the thing that worked the best after I blew everything off was the toothbrush because it was able to get down in uh, between the fins and kind of dust the rest of that off. Now, once I started, I did end up getting some goggles and a, and a mask because all the dust, I couldn't tell which direction the dust was gonna be blowing and it was in my face. And so I got those so that I wasn't annoyed um, breathing that stuff in. But I'm really happy with the way this turned out. You should be able to clean the blower, uh, the blower fan without having to disassemble this thing. You could get more in depth and take the motor off and do a much more thorough job. But for what we're trying to accomplish, this is gonna make a world of difference. So last thing we have to do is just put everything back in and hopefully the notes we took to hook everything back up work and the furnace comes back on. So here we go. <laughs> While you have the blower assembly out, go ahead and use your vacuum to vacuum out the inside of that furnace cavity as well. The more dirt you can get out of the system, the better. When you're sliding the blower assembly back into place, it's important to make sure that you get into the tracks and it slides in properly. Slide it in as far as it needs to go until the screw holes that were holding it in place are back in line from when you first took it out. When you're reconnecting all of these wires, make sure that you plug in all of the terminals all the way and if you are going to have wires underneath the screws, make sure that you're making good tight connections. All right, so we've hooked everything back up and if everything works the way that it's supposed to, our last step that we wanna do is turn the furnace back on to make sure that what we just did turns everything back on and it works. I'm gonna turn power on and walk you through the sequence. I'm gonna make sure that my thermostat is turned up so that it gets calls for heat. We should hear the inducer motor come on. Okay, that just came on. Or we're gonna see the igniter ignite, the gas valve open, and the flames ignite, and hopefully they stay on. The igniter's glowing. Next, we should hear the valve open. Okay, there it goes. Flame, the flame sensor is making sure that the flame stays on. That's good. Now. Once this thing is going, don't stick your hands inside. You'll have to find this door switch and tape it or cover it in order for that to run with the doors off. But this was a success. I'm gonna go ahead and put the doors on, button everything up and then come back and close. Well, there you go. Not exactly a beginner project, but if you can do, if you feel comfortable doing the things that you saw in the video, good luck. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did find it helpful, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you like the videos that we're making. And if you do like the videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know next time we release a new video. Uh, until next time, good luck with your next project. And don't forget, if you ever feel like you've gotten in over your head, stop and call a technician that you trust for some help. Thanks again for watching. See ya.